this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the crafty carrying case. It's a free pattern on mooglyblog.com, which you can find at the link in the description. At that link, you'll find both right and left-handed tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern itself and all the supplies you need. I'll be using Red Heart with Love, Stripes, and Solids. I will be using an eye hook. This one is by Furls. I recommend that you have some stitch markers for this one. These are some really fun ones from Clover. And then I'll also be using two of these snaps by Susan Bates. They're no snag snaps. So let's go ahead and get started. Here you can see the outer portion of our crafty carrying case ready for assembly. And I've got the yarn still attached with a stitch marker here, just holding that loop open. Now you can see that there's a little ridge right here and a ridge right here as well as a loop right here, and I'll demo those portions for you now. Otherwise though, it really is just simply single crochet, so it's all quite simple to make. Now, I made this part in the Passion Stripe colorway of the With Love Stripes, but I'm going to demo it in a solid color so it's just a little bit easier to see. So to begin the outer portion of our crafty carrying case, we're gonna start with a slip knot on the hook and then chain 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Then we're going to skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each of the remaining chains. I like to work into that back hump right here rather than under the top two loops. It's just a personal preference, but you can work into whichever part of the chain you prefer. So if you aren't familiar with single crochets, I do have a separate tutorial for single crochets on the Moogly YouTube channel. That is primarily, I think, just about the only stitch we use. There's a couple variations, but it really is the only stitch we're going to use for this pattern. We'll do a little bit of chaining here and there, of course, but not too much of that even. And it's really only three parts that are then assembled. So we're just going to keep single crocheting right on across. For those of you who aren't familiar with single crochet, you just stick your hook in the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So at the end of row one, and again, indeed each row of the outer portion here, we will have a total of a 19 stitches. Because remember we chain 20, but we skip that very first chain. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting on across here and I will see you when we get to the end of row one. And here we are at the end of row one, 19 single crochets made. Now rows two through 14 are going to be all the same. We chain one and turn and work a single crochet in each stitch across. So again, we'll just have 19 stitches in each row. So after you've made 14 rows of single crochet, then we'll be ready to work the fold in our craft key, crafty carrying case. We've got a little move here that will help it just create a really nice crease. So I'm just going to go ahead and get to the end of row two here. I want you to go ahead and go to the end of row 14. Again, just 19 single crochets in every row. Be sure to count. And I will pretend that I am ready for row 15 with you here in just a moment. Okay, so hopefully you've actually got 14 rows of single crochet made. I'm gonna put this down for just a second and bring up my finished outer. What we're going to be making, making next here in row 15, these were my first 14 rows, is this row right here that has the ridge and also that has this loop. So let's go ahead and make that on our sample here together. We're going to start row 15 with a chain of 12. So one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six. And I do want to say you want to keep these chains pretty tight. We're not going to be working back into these chains at all. So go ahead and make them really nice tight chains. You don't have to worry about getting your hook back in there later. Let's see. Can't talk and count at the same time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I made one too many. So I'll just pull that back out and put my hook back in that loop. And there we are. That is our 12 chains. This is going to be sort of a hanging loop for our case. So like I say, we're not going to work back into these at all. What I'm going to do is go back to that next single crochet here since we've turned to work back across the row, but rather than working into it like we did before, I'm going to work in just the back loop only. So to work in the back loop only, that means when you look at the top of the stitch and you've got the loop 
two loops at the top of each stitch. You've got one close to you and one further away. The one closest to you is the front loop. The one furthest away is the back loop. And that really is just how simple front loop, back loop is. It's relative to the crocheter. So if I turned this around, they would switch. But because they're this way, this is the front loop and that's the back loop. So to single crochet in just the back loop only, I'm going to put my hook right in the middle of the stitch there and just go right under just that back loop. It's that simple. Then I can pull up my yarn and finish my single crochet just as I normally would, like so. So then I'm just gonna continue crocheting across this row, but in the back loop only of each stitch. And what this does is it leaves that front loop unworked and that creates the ridge that gives us our look of a fold, but it also pushes these stitches towards the back. You can see they wanna fold already. And that's how we get the great creases in our crafty carrying case. So I'm just going to continue working in the back loop only. Just go ahead and take your time and make sure you just go under that very back loop of each stitch until I've gotten to the end of row 15. And then we'll be ready for some more standard single crochet. Okay, so here I am at the end of row 15. You can see I worked in just that back loop across, so it already wants to fold up on me, which is exactly what I want. Now, rows 16 through 30 are going to be the same as two through 14. We're just gonna chain one and single crochet all the way across. Now we're going back to working under both of those loops. These are standard single crochets. So go ahead and make your single crochet rows until you've got a total of 30 rows made. Okay, so let's say you've got 30 rows done. I've got four, but we're gonna pretend I've done all 30. It's time to make row 31. This is the only other row that's distinctive and it's going to be simpler than row 15. We're gonna start with a chain one and now without chaining, we're just going to go back in, without chaining anymore I should say, we're just gonna go back in and do back loop only again. So more back loop only single crochets just all the way across here and this creates that second fold. We don't need a second loop so we're not gonna do a big chain 12, we just chain one for the height of our turning chain there. So again, just single crochet in the back loop only all the way across. You can see that will create our second fold. If you're playing with this pattern, altering it for your own purposes, making it a little bigger or smaller, the key to remember when making these back loop only rows is just to make sure that they are both on either an even row or an odd row. You wanna make sure that they're on the same side, otherwise you're going to get more of a Z fold rather than a wallet type fold. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting here in the back loop across. Again, this is row 31. And then after that, it's just back to chain one. Oops, I got a little twisted there. Chain one and then single crochet in each stitch across, just like we've been doing for the rest of the case. And you'll do that for a total of 44 rows before you wanna stop and set that aside. So go ahead and finish 44 total rows of single crochet. Just remember you've got the back loop only on the 15th and 31st rows. And then we'll take another look at what we've got. Okay, so after you've crocheted 44 rows across, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, although not yet with the snaps on it, of course. You can see here's my row 15 and my row 31 with the ridges, and it really does encourage it to fold right up together. So after you have gotten your 44 rows made, like I say, go ahead and put a stitch marker in that last loop. You wanna leave it attached to your yarn because we'll use that for assembly later. If you do accidentally cut it or you need to cut it, that's fine. It just means another end to weave in later. So at this point is where you want to add your buttons. Now these are, again, these are the Susan Bates no snag snaps. That's what I like to use here. Um, I wanna do a snap rather than a button loop for this project. Uh, if you prefer to do a button loop, then you would need to go in and do some chaining and space leaving there. Again, that's an alteration you could make. Otherwise, I'll be demoing these snaps. Now, as you can see, these have nice big holes here. Let me pull up the other end right here. You can see this is the female end of the snap. This is considered the male end, and they'll just snap together really nicely like that. And the thing I love about these snaps in particular, let me pull one up here, is that my yarn needle will fill, fit right through it. So a lot of times with buttons, you have a hard time sewing them on. Um, there's some tricks for that, and I do have videos for that on this channel too. But with these buttons, you can see the yarn needle fits through there really nicely. I also really like that these don't have any sharp edges. Um, a lot of times if you have a button or something with, or a snap with sharp edges, it can wear against the yarn and end up fraying the yarn. So these are really great for this purpose. So I just simply sewed these on, two of them. And again, I wanna make sure that they're both the male end or both the female end. It doesn't really matter which one as long as they're the same so you don't end up sewing the wrong ends together here. 
Um, and then he just put, I put two loops through each one. And I didn't worry too much about hiding my sewing on the other side here because I know that this will get covered up with one of our inner portions. So I went ahead and sewed those on and I sewed them onto the panel. If you think of this as sort of three sections, we had our first 14 rows, then we had our loop and our back loop only row, then we've got our middle section, then our last section. I sewed these on the last section and I just sort of eyeballed how far in I wanted them. So wherever you like to place them, you could do one big snap if you preferred. I preferred two like this, whatever you like. So after you've got those sewn on, go ahead and set this whole thing aside and we're going to make the inner portions. Okay, so these are the inner portions of our crafty carrying case. There's basically a pocket that will go on the end, which is great for scissors and things like that. And then a center section that will be just attached to the top and bottom for all of our tapestry needles and yarn needles to stick into. For these, I used a solid color of Red Heart with Love in the papaya colorway. Of course, you can use whichever colors you want. You could use the same stripes that you might use for your outer or whichever colorway you're into. So these are just simply single crochet. The pocket is made with a chain of 20 and then you skip the first one and come back and single crochet 19 across and then just work for 12 rows. Then go ahead, break your yarn and weave in your ends and it's ready for attachment. The needle holder section is just a little bit more complicated but also still just single crochet. You just chain 11, then skip the one closest to the hook, single crochet 10 and do that chain one and single crochet across for 19 rows. So you'll have 19 total rows of single crochet then you chain one and single crochet all the way around. And to get around that corner, when you get to a corner, just chain one and then just start single crocheting right along the edge. Again, I do have a separate video tutorial for how to single crochet. If that's the level you're at, I suggest you go back and watch that video. Otherwise, the written instruction, this is just could not be simpler. It's just two simple rectangles in single crochet. All right, I've got all my pieces made and the first two parts of the button sewn on, so it was time for blocking. I pinned out all the pieces, and you can see here that I've still got the yarn attached. I put a little stitch marker in there to hold the loop open, but the yarn is still attached to the rest of the skein, which I'll use to put the uh, final assembling together. So I just want to lay these out though and get them nicely blocked, and you can see I even pulled that loop up a little high just to block it out. So I pinned them down, sprayed them with a little bit of water with a little bit of uh, unicorn fiber rinse in there just to help soften it up a little bit. And here is the pocket that will go on the end, and this will be our little needle holder. So those are made in the papaya, and of course this is our uh, passion stripe. So we've got these blocked out, I let them dry overnight, and now we're ready for assembly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the inner portions on the inside of my outer portion. So I need to flip this over, so I'm looking at the inside here. There we go. And then I just need to remember that this is the end with my snaps, but that should be easy because this is the end with my loop. So. Let's talk about the needle holder first. This is just the one that was a little taller that we worked in edging around. And what I want to do is line it up with the center of my nifty needle case. So I can kind of see, it's, I don't know if it's easy to see on camera, it's easier to see in person. You can see there's a deeper line here where I worked my back loop only, I can tell that's where my crease is. So that makes it really simple to just really line it up perfectly right there in the center. And at this point, I'm going to take a few stitch markers and I'm just going to use those to tack down the inner portion together with the outer portion to get those lined up so that when I single crochet all the way around the outside, I can single cro crochet through both the outer portion and the inner portion here, and that will sew it together without having to actually sew it together separately and then work in edging. Sort of a nifty way to get it all done at once. So after you've tacked down the top two ones, then we're just gonna come down here, do the same thing at the bottom. Again, just try and keep it lined up with the rows. That makes it a lot easier here. Just to sort of use those as guidelines. There, let's see, there we are. So once we've got the needle section sort of tacked down there in the middle, then we want to add our pocket. And this is one I was talking about We'll cover up the sewing for those snaps so we don't have to worry about making that super pretty. We can sew those down really securely. So what I'm going to do is just sort of decide what part of the pocket I think looks prettiest because I want that to be on the outside, so to speak, or well, it'll be the inside of the case, but the part you visually see. And I'm just going to line that up right with our edge. Now I need to be careful here because I do still have my working loop out there, but I just want to make sure it's lined up with the outer edge completely as well as the top and the bottom. And of course, we can use this little line here to help make us line up nicely too. So I'm just going to use the stitch markers again to match up the stitches here. 
so that I know my pocket is right where I want it to be. And then the nifty thing is all the assembly will happen while we are making our final edging there, except for sewing on those last two buttons, of course, that will have to be done by hand. Can't do that while we're crocheting at the same time. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these last two stitch markers on here, and then we'll be ready for crocheting. So I've got my pieces assembled and it's ready to start crocheting again. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over at this point, and that's one of the reasons I have those stitch markers on there to hold everything together. And I'm finally going to remove the stitch marker from my working loop of my yarn here. I need to get this back in the right direction. Again, when you've had your hook out of a loop for a while, always check and make sure when you reinsert your hook that when you pull on the working yarn, the part that moves is in front of the hook. Just a little, little handy tip there. Now from here, I'm going to chain one and turn, and then I'm just going to single crochet all the way around the entire piece. And anytime I come to a part that has an inner portion, like right here at this bottom edge, then I'm going to make sure to work through both sections to assemble those together. So let's go ahead and begin this one together. I'm going to go right back down into that first stitch of my outer, and then I'm going to take my time here and find the first stitch right there at the bottom of that pocket. This is one of the reasons I like working into that back hump of the chain. It leaves two nice loops to work into right here. So I've gone through both of those sections, and I'll just carefully pull up my yarn, yarn over, and finish single crochet. That's all there is to it. Go to the next one, go through that outer portion, then go through the inner portion, pull up a loop, and single crochet. So you can see how by doing this, we're actually attaching our inner portions and outer portions together without having to do any sewing. We're just crocheting the edging we would want to put on there anyway. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting all the way around. When I get to the corners, I will work three single crochets in each corner stitch, just that, to help guide it right around the corner itself. If you don't like the way that looks, you could do a chain one or a chain two instead. It's really kind of up to you. For something like this that's going to be carrying little things, I like to just keep my stitches a little tighter. I didn't want to take the risk of having a chain one or chain two there myself because I'm afraid things might fall out. I don't know that I'll be putting anything quite that tiny in there, but just in case. So I'm just, like I say, I'm just gonna continue single crocheting all the way around. When I get to that needle holder section in the middle, of course, then I'll be sure to go through both those layers again, right there, but only, of course, at this edge and at this edge, because we wanna leave these sides open. And by working all the way around here, we'll have our pocket right here, which will be great when we fold up, it'll be nice and secure. So let's go ahead and keep working our edging, and I will see you when I'm just about done with it. Okay, so I've got most of my border done. You can see I've gotten along the side here and I've tacked down the top here, but I've come to that loop and I wanted to just show you how I handle when I get to this little loop here, or hanging loop, because this could be tricky. So I tried a couple different methods and I think the one that I like best is rather than trying to single crochet into this row right here, which can push the loop in some funny directions, I'm going, just gonna chain one and I'm gonna hold the loop in front of my work and then just come right on over here to that next row here on the other side of the loop and put my next single crochet there. So I just won't have an edging stitch right there, but I think the chain one allows the loop to still be there really nicely and it doesn't push it too far forward or into the inside of the pouch at all. So from here, I'm just gonna continue working my way around the pouch and I'll see you when we get to the end. All right, so I've worked all the way around our case here. All my little inner bits are tacked down all the way and I'm at that last corner. And I just wanted to show you, remember we worked three single crochets in each corner all the way around. Here on this last corner, we chained one and just started working. So as I come up the side, we've got one there. So if we sort of think of this as our another corner, we've got our first one here and our last one here, we need one more. So I just want to point out, I will put one extra single crochet in this corner so that it has three also. And at this point it can be getting a little tight, but that's a good thing. We want our case to be nice and solid. So after I make that second single crochet in that space, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my yarn. I always recommend leaving six to eight inches to weave in your ends really nicely. So I'll just pull that through and I will weave that in here in a little bit. So otherwise we are almost done. All our pieces are together. We've got some ends to weave in, but one thing we still need to do is add the other two ends of our snap, snaps I should say, so that our case closes nicely. So let's go ahead and pull those up now. I also wanted to point out that as I was crocheting around the outside, I did remove the stitch markers. We don't need those anymore, thankfully, so we can just set those aside. 
Now, the trick to adding the snaps, of course, is going to be getting them lined up correctly. So we don't do the, use a crochet hook for this part. We're going to need to pull off some yarn. And at this point, it could be the papaya or some more of the stripes, whatever works for you. And we just want to cut off a good length of it to sew with. Then we're going to go ahead and put that on our yarn needle here. And yarn needles come in different sizes. If you find that you need a larger yarn needle for this yarn, that's perfectly fine. You just want to make sure whatever yarn needle you do use will fit through the holes of your snaps or buttons that you're using. Um, if they don't, then I have a separate tutorial for that on the YouTube channel where you can use a dental floss or a thread actually to pull them through. So back to this case though. What we want to do is we want to sew these ends on the inside of that last, uh, actually the first flap we made because here's our loop right here. So that very first section but we want to go ahead and fold it up to make sure they end up in the right spots. Now, if you follow the written instructions, I tell you exactly which rows to sew these onto and which rows to sew these onto. So you can look for that there. But I'm just going to line it up for now. And then one thing I can do, this is just kind of a back and forth fiddly thing, you know, just make it work, snap it on there so you know exactly where it's gonna be. And then you can sort of line up and feel where you want that to match up. From there, I can hold them together and start sewing it on. So to begin the yarn attached to the fabric, I'm actually gonna set this aside and sort of hold my place with my thumb. I'm going to insert my yarn just under the loops here, just as if I was weaving it in and I didn't want it to show on the other side because that is the case right now. I don't really want the sewing for these buttons to show on the outside of my case. So I'll pull that through and I wanna leave again, I wanna leave a good end there so I can weave that in later and I don't accidentally pull it out while I'm sewing, but this is really just kind of basic sewing skills. If you haven't sewn on a button before, it's pretty darn simple and definitely a handy skill to have. So I'm just going to work my yarn back and forth a couple times here in different directions so that it's nice and solid on the fabric. And then again, I'm going to check the placement. I will be obsessively checking this placement until it is finalized. So like so, there we are. And I know exactly that's where I want it to be. So to start, I'm just going to go up through one of these holes in the snap, pull that little end out of the way there, and I wanna pull the yarn nice and tight, and then I'm going to just catch a loop of the yarn underneath here, like so. Again, I'm not gonna go all the way through the fabric. I've got my hand underneath so I can feel that I'm not going all the way through and that you shouldn't be able to see this yarn from the outside. Now this yarn's a little speckly, so it shouldn't be too bad if you can see it, but it's always nice to try and just keep it really clean. I'm going to go through each of these holes twice, because I feel like that just sews it down a little bit better. And this is a piece that I plan on getting a lot of use out of. I plan on using it basically every day. So to get over to the next hole, I'm gonna try and turn it here. Like I say, it's a little fiddly, but simple at the same time. I'm just gonna sort of run under the top of the stitches here to get over to where the next hole is. And pull that through. And then I'll come up through the next hole in the button, or snap rather, I keep calling them buttons, they're snaps. So I will just continue to work my way around the button here. Pick up some more yarn from underneath. Go back through that hole again, and then I'll travel on to the next hole, like so. And I'll just work my way all the way around and then weave in these ends. But at this point, I really am. Like I say, when I'm sewing these things on, I'm obsessive. I try them a million times before I finally weave in my ends and call it done but this seems to be a pretty darn good lineup. I've still got plenty of room in there to put my stuff. It's not going to pull or be off-centered at all. So I feel like this is a really good spot for this button. So I'm gonna continue sewing it on. Then I will do the same thing for the other one and weave in those ends. So I'll see you when that part's done. So once you've woven in all your ends, you're finished. If you'd like, you can decorate the front of your crafty carrying case with some pretty buttons or appliques or whatever you like, but here's how I'm using it. I've got my Red Heart tape measure. Isn't that cute? I love it with the little button right there attached to the loop so I always know where that is. I always need a tape measure. And then right inside here, we've got a section for all the needles. And with this pocket, I can put my favorite scissors in there since they're a little bit bigger. I can just slip those right in there or whatever else you wanna put in that pocket. Fold it up, snap your snaps, 
and nothing's going anywhere. It's all easy to throw in your bag, ready to take with you. You can fill out the pockets and the sections with whatever you like and make it your own. I hope you've enjoyed this pattern. I hope you enjoy making and using your own. And I hope you enjoy using Red Heart with Love, both stripes and solids. It's one of my favorite yarns and I just find it absolutely perfect for any sort of home decor or little items like this and I can't wait it wait to use it in some blankets when it gets a little colder out so I hope you'll give it a try if you do let me know what you think let me know if you like this video give it a thumbs up tell me what you think in the comments don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly channel and hit that bell button so you're notified anytime there's a brand new video thank you so much for watching and if you didn't catch it before again please do be sure to go to the link in the description for the written pattern and all the supplies you need Thank <laughs> you.